In case you were wondering, there are still NFL players out there kneeling during the national anthem. The league has effectively decided to take action against the kneeling players, by not taking action. And so goes the NFL as it plunges into a probable death spiral. Dolphins teammates Kenny Stills and Albert Wilson are two players that are still kneeling. They were the only two on their team to kneel during the national anthem on the NFL's opening Sunday faceoff. These are guys that Colin Kaepernick calls his brothers. Kaepernick wasted no time in thanking these two disrespectful players on social media. He gave them a sickening personal surprise, an attaboy. My brothers Stills and Wilson continue to show their unwavering strength by fighting for the oppressed, Kaepernick said in his tweet. They have not backed down, even when attacked and intimidated. Love is at the root of our resistance, gag worthy. Kaepernick started this whole mess of radical activism when he was still with the 49ers in 2016 when he knelt during the national anthem to protest police brutality and social injustice in America. What he did was start a movement by those looking for a reason to hate America, police officers, the military and first responders. Kaepernick could not even get a job after he left the NFL until Nike came along and decided to make him the face of their Just Do It campaign. Now, he's making millions for being a social justice warrior who embodies the hatred of all things American. Kaepernick is suing the NFL nevertheless for collusion. Kaepernick's message via Nike, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, is hypocritical in the extreme. It mocks the true sacrifice of military veterans and police officers who literally gave it all by laying down their lives for us. Kaepernick hasn't sacrificed anything. From ABC News, on Sunday, Kaepernick's message got through to his friends in Miami. I know he has our back, Stills said. Really, there has been a huge difference between when we first started protesting and now. A lot of people are reaching out and supporting us, so I really appreciate that. To everybody out there, let's keep doing our best to make positive change and have these conversations and make our country a better place. While Stills and Wilson were kneeling during the anthem, teammate Robert Quinn raised his fist. Niners receiver Marquise Goodwin did the same at San Francisco's game at Minnesota. In Los Angeles, Chargers left tackle Russell Okun raised his fist. Broncos receiver Demarius Thomas and linebacker Brandon Marshall, and Seahawks lineman Dwayne Brown and Quinton Jefferson, retreated to their respective tunnels while the anthem played. At the peak of the anthem protests, as many as 200 players would partake. On most weeks last year, the Seahawks led the way with the most players doing something to make a statement. Though that number had fallen to two to start 2018, Brown wasn't worried. I made my decision. That was my decision, he said. I wasn't paying attention to see what other teams or other players are doing. The NFL briefly had a policy in place in May regarding the anthem but rescinded it after the players' union filed a grievance, which sent the league to the negotiating table with the union. Those talks are ongoing. Brown said he hasn't heard any word from the union dissuading player protests during the anthem. I don't think that would be the best idea to try to get people to move on from it, he said. The country hasn't moved on from it, so I'm not going to move on from it, either. President Trump hasn't given up on this and is still tweeting over their disrespect and linking their low ratings for Thursday night's opener between Atlanta and Philadelphia, which were the lowest ratings for an opener since 2008 to players who refused to stand for the anthem. If the players stood proudly for our flag and anthem, and it is all shown on broadcast, maybe ratings could come back. Otherwise worse, Trump tweeted.